Hi, thanks for tuning in to another episode of latinograduate.net. We have today with us a very uh, special person, uh, special because uh, art is a special thing to me as well, as well as to Latino graduate. We have Irene Carranza. Irene, thank you so very much for thank coming onto the Aaron. show. Nice to be here. It's great to be here. Irene, you have interesting art uh, and you have an interesting story. Tell us, tell us a bit of your story as to take us back before you became known as as a painter. How far back do you want me to go? Uh, take us just one one year before you just... One year before? Where were you right before? Right before I was preparing to open an art school in Northern California. I was training um, in, a, in a program called Monart School of Art. Okay. And I was, they wanted me to open one in Fremont, California or, or Los Gatos. Mm -hmm. And so I was in training and I was doing all this stuff. And part of my training led me to uh, self-help graphics. This was in 96. Uh, for printmaking classes, and so I hooked up with Self Help Graphics. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they're an uh, organization in East Los Angeles. It's a network for Latino artists. Oh. It hooks you up with galleries, uh, with free printmaking classes, with um, an etching room, a studio um, where you can use their supplies and their equipment. Okay. Um, they're hooked up with you know Los Angeles galleries. Well, not just Los Angeles, Arizona, New Mexico. Uh, Texas, right. and then they have an atelier, a special place where you can go and make mono prints and um, silk screens. Wow. So basically, I hooked up they with them just to do some, yeah, to do some training on how to do wood block and uh -huh. print other printmaking techniques. And basically, it hooked me up with a lot of the Los Angeles local Latino art scene. Uh -huh. And at that point, uh, that's what inspired me to go back to being an artist, which I had lost. I had been disillusioned. In well, college. Why? Why were you disillusioned? Well, what disillusioned me was I was, you know, a gung ho. I mean, all my life I was the artist in the family. I was mm -hmm. a painter. I had all these dreams and aspirations to, you know, exhibit worldwide, and that I was so good because I was surrounded by people that didn't draw or paint, and I was the only okay. one in my family that was an artist. So you excelled in the family. You were the artist. I was of the, the only family. one. Yeah. And then oh, they said, right. "Oh God, you know, you know, none of the uncles and none of the uh -huh. grandparents. Nobody, you know, nobody had a clue." Right. But my parents were very supportive. It was like, "Well, I'll go for it," you know. So I got scholarships to go to a couple of really good art schools. Oh, did you? Yeah, I went to Art Center College of Design. Okay. And um, at that point, at that point, I lost my nerve. Basically, uh, I had a teacher what do you in the class. You lost your nerve? Well, I had a oh. teacher in a class. It was a cl for some reason in that class I would just freeze up. I was just looking around. I was 19 years old, looking around, thinking, "Oh my God, everybody's better than me. Oh. You know, I'm not that good." And so, all of a sudden, it's like my confidence was like shot. And I had the teacher come come to me and say, "Oh, you must be a designer, a design major." I was like, "No, I'm a painter. I'm an illustration major." Mm -hmm. And he says, "Well, I would consider design classes." because you can't draw. Oh, Basically, no. he may not have said you can't draw, but that's what I heard. That's what you heard. I mean, I was a 19-year-old, I was looking for an excuse. Right. So to me, when he said that, it was like, okay, I'm changing my major. Is that what happened? Yeah, I changed my major. What did you end up doing? And even though, you know, it was just me, I was insecure at the time, uh -huh. you know, I didn't have anybody else to go to, what do I do? Um, and so when he said that, it was just like an excuse to basically just give it up and okay. just say, you know, I don't have what it takes. But at our center, wow. most of the people were 10 years older than me. A lot of those people So you were 19, back. they were 29. They were like 29, and they were like, they've already been doing it for years. And so I was looking around, and I was doing pretty well in all the other classes, you know, mm -hmm. but this class, for some reason, it was, I was devastated. I said, that's it. So I became a graphic designer, and um, oh, okay. uh, I worked in advertising. Right. So that's what I did after I got out of school. And did um, you, well, let me ask you. Just let's break right there. Sure. Did you did you enjoy what you did in advertising? It was a different. Um, it wasn't your passion, obviously. It was not at all. I was not happy with it. Basically, okay. I had nominal success with it, and I, you know, I enjoyed some aspect of it, like the design part, but all the business aspect and the you know the nuts and bolts of it, okay. I didn't enjoy. It wasn't that creative. I had other people telling me what to do always. Right. And, you know, it's lettering, it's um, doing ads, it's doing logos, that sort of menus, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the same as having, you know, artistic license to do your own creation. So right. basically, it w I wasn't fulfilled or satisfied. So basically, that's that's what happened. So you had time. a yearning during that entire time to go back to what I you did. what you enjoy. I did, and I thought the way I got my foot back in the door was when I started. I I was offered a job as a private. I mean, as an arts teacher mm -hmm. at a, a Korean school in Roland Heights. It was an art school, and so I started teaching the kids, and they liked me. And so then they asked me for private lessons, and so I started teaching Japanese and Korean students private art lessons in their homes, or they would come. 
to my home. I, okay. I set up one of the bedrooms into a little mini studio for my students. Right. So basically, that's the process of what led me to decide that I was going to open an art school. Right. And that was also the process of me starting to paint and draw again. Wow. At that point, my kids, my four children were, were young. Uh huh. Now, that, that sounds, I mean, it sounds like, wow, you just went from one to the next and, and you succeeded. But I know that there was more to the story than that as far as how, it, what was your life like at that moment? Which moment was that? Um, at the, at getting into the art, getting back into art. It was, um, I was going through a separation in the marriage, so there was a lot of turmoil and unhappiness and ma mm -hmm. many, many um, life changes that right. were starting to take place. So basically at that point when um, I started taking the printmaking classes, going back to self-help graphics in 96, um, I was l looking to be separated and move up north with my four children. And um, what happened, it, it, it's just like everything went another direction. I got mm -hmm. involved with artists and started, I, they invited me to exhibit. I went to the exhibit, it was at Self Help Graphics, it was mm -hmm. at their annual big sale. Um, and what happened, I started showing my work that I had been doing on the side really late at night after I was done with work, done, all the kids were in bed. What happened was late at night, like at two or three in the morning, I do these paintings and I started to like my work for the first time because what happened is, um, I was teaching the children how to build their confidence and how not to judge the work, how to be more free with what they created. And if they didn't like it, well, they toss it or they change it or whatever. But right. it was like, not a big deal. Don't take it so seriously. Just start over. And so all these lessons that I was teaching, I was, they were going back to me. The children were teaching me how to be oh. freer with my expression, how not to judge it, not to, not to be so hard on me. So at night, I would just like paint, you know, and, you know. It was, I was having a good time with it, and not thinking that I was going to exhibit anything right. or that I was going to show it to anyone, hide everything. You're doing it for yourself. I was doing it for myself. Mm -hmm. So when I took the printmaking classes, it was just because I needed to learn some other techniques so I could teach my students. And basically what happened is I started to, I mean, a whole torrent of creativity started to take off. I was just like painting and drawing and printmaking, and then late at night, and thinking, God, all this stuff was bottled up for so many years, back right. from the college days, where mm -hmm. that's, I was this bright-eyed, bushy-tailed student thinking, I'm going to conquer the world and I'm going to be right. this great hotshot artist and then, right. you know, it didn't happen. Right. So basically it was all bottled up and I, it was just, I just couldn't wait to have the time to do it. And so they invited me to do that art sale and it was a big hit. I was a big hit and I was afraid to show my work because there was a lot of stuff that I was hiding. Right. I had to show it to everybody and I sold within like half an hour, I sold one of my uh, uh, pastel paintings and I mean, I didn't know what to sell it for. It was like, they go, what do you want for it? We love it. I was uh -huh. like, I don't know, 500? I thought 500 right. was like so much money. And he's right. like, sure, uh, here's cash. You know, I'm like, wow. sure. And then I sold a lot of art, other artwork that same day. And I said, man, I'm in the wrong business, you know. <laughs> I don't really want to be an art teacher. The thing, right. that's the bottom line. My true aspiration, my true dream was to be a painter and mm -hmm. an artist. Mm -hmm. So that tapped into it and it was like, everything just changed. And how long ago was this? How this long ago did that? So we've got 10 years ago. 10 years ago. I, and the reason I say that is, you know, sometimes individuals is, that are watching, we have ones that are young watching and they're looking to be artists. So they're saying, what do I do? Do I go to school? I, it, you know, in interviews, you probably get asked that all the time. Do you think somebody should go to school to hone their craft um, or that they should just go out there and do it themselves? Now, you had an interesting situation, but what would you say to artists? I think it's whatever uh, works for you because some people need, you know, a very formal education. They want to learn technique. They want to um, go to the formal lessons and then there's others that are you know didactic they can learn on their own they can just study and read and maybe attend some workshops maybe look at books of other artists right. and copy I mean I know that you, people say you're not supposed to copy but everybody copies I mean, we're <laughs> visual creatures well, even taking a, a photograph and then and, and then doing copy, that, right? right? I mean, Picasso, mm -hmm. he blatantly copied from everybody, and he's like one of the biggest names ever in the right. art scene. Um, everybody copies, so they're afraid to copy, but that's how you learn. I know when I was taking the formal lessons in college, mm -hmm. you would copy. Okay. You know, and that's how you learn technique and composition and color and what you want to do, what you not don't want to do. I remember right. I had a class and we were learning how to paint like Rembrandt, and you know, and that stuck with me how to paint like that. Um, certain certain things that I learned and I still remember that